Good morning or good afternoon, depending on the region of our country or the nations you join us from. My name is Joy Bacon. I am chair of the board of directors of IRIS, the Institute for Research and Development on Inclusion in Society. We're proud to be sponsored by Inclusion Canada and honored to convene this forum, coming to you from the setting of the Canadian Human Rights Museum as well as many other venues we have fashioned from our own homes in these still pandemic times. We are speaking and listening today from, tradi from traditional and unceded territories of many diverse First Peoples throughout this country. We acknowledge with great respect and gratitude the opportunity to do so. And we hope that our gathering and dialogue today will help on the path to decolonization and reconciliation with Indigenous peoples and to inclusion for all those who remain structurally excluded in our society. We thank you for joining us in this dialogue. We will not solve it all today, but what is important is that we are gathering to begin the process of reaching common understanding and building a collective movement for inclusion. Now, it's my pleasure to introduce Michael Baugh, Managing Director at IRIS, to share with us an overview of today's dialogue. Thank you, Joy, and welcome. My name is Michael Bach. We're gathering today on International Human Rights Day 2021, confronted by so much exclusion and inequality of people with an intellectual disability, a group who's always a vantage point for Iris's work, and by the marginalization of so many others. People with other disabilities, the deaf community, those living with mental health issues, indigenous peoples, women, gender non-conforming persons, the 2SLGBTQ plus communities, black African, and other racialized groups, and migrant peoples, among others. As I said in my notes for today's event, our recognition of human rights, along with our politics and public policies to realize them, often reflects distinct populations, different realities, separate struggles. But what if we imagined the commonalities across experiences of marginality? What if we listened with, with humility and respect, and then dug deeper to see the foundations underlying what might first appear as distinct experiences of oppression and structural violence to both the human and the more than human. Might we then be able to imagine and mobilize a more universal politics and movement for inclusion? a solidarity that can confront and cross divides between social and climate injustice, a bridge we all know is needed now more urgently than ever. But how do we create a more inclusive social imagination to help fuel a progressive politics for change? Well, to, today, to help us do just that, we are extremely fortunate to be joined by a uniquely talented and remarkable group of theater and other artists, performers, poets, writers, thinkers, and filmmakers, each in their own way, reaching beyond the boundaries and systems imposed upon us. Together, I think they provide us, they provide us touchstones to help spark our imagination of what inclusion might look like and the histories, the injustices, and the possibilities it must account for. We're hugely honored to be joined by poet, educator, and spoken word performer, Lillian Allen. Lillian is a professor of creative writing at Ontario College of Art and Design, OCAD University. She's a two-time Juno Award winner, and she's a trailblazer in the field of spoken word and dub poetry. Lillian crosses boundaries in all, all kinds of ways, 
exploring both old and new sounds in music to create her, her distinctive leading edge Canadian uh, brand of reggae with new world sounds in her poetry reading recordings. I, I love the sign that she holds up in one of the images on her website. Change your consciousness, change the world, make education mean something, make your education mean something. And that is what our forum is all about today. Following, following this opening from Lillian Allen, we will share a short film of selections from two pieces that Iris has sponsored in the past few years. Doris Rajan's play, A Tender Path, explores the intersections of people who have experienced trauma, people with disabilities, racialized people, indigenous communities dealing with the legacies of institutionalization, the impact of imperialist wars and colonialism, migration and residential schools. Doris is Iris's director of social development and operations and much more. She's an actor, a filmmaker and playwright. Scenes from a new, from a tender path are complemented by selections from a, a new dance piece created in collaboration with Iris, No Woman's Land by the innovative and daring choreographer and producer, Roshanik Jaberi. This piece is imagined from the documented voices of migrants and refugees whose traumatic histories are compounded by the experiences of exclusion and violence on arrival in Canada. Our thanks also go to celebrated and award-winning Canadian theater director, actor, writer, choreographer, and dramaturg, Sohail Parsa for directing the selections from these pieces and to the talented emerging filmmaker, J.K. E. Scott, who was director of photography and editor for the piece you're about to see. This performance was filmed on location at the Canadian Human Rights Museum in Winnipeg and we cannot thank them enough for their hospitality and commitment to this project. We've been in dialogue with the museum about curating a living exhibit on dialogues from the margins. The museum graciously opened their doors for filming these selections on site and offered us free reign to use this iconic, beautiful public space on the Canadian landscape. Catherine Frizee also joins us and we're incredibly grateful. Catherine is a longtime disability rights activist, writer, curator, and thinker, Order of Canada recipient, a formerly chief commissioner of the Ontario Human Rights Commission, and Professor Emerita of Disability Studies from what is now temporarily known as X University, formerly known as Ryerson University, a name that shall be consigned to its history given the colonial violence that name symbolizes. Catherine's currently dedicating her time to nurturing diverse disability communities connected to grassroots movements and exploring what intersections look like when we do justice to the realities of disability. We are also thrilled to have Ariel Chekwe Duranger, who is a Dene Sulin woman, member of the Athabasca Chippewa First Nation and mother of two. Ariel comes from a family of indigenous rights activists fighting for the recognition, sovereignty and autonomy of their indigenous lands and territory in what is now known as Treaty 8. Ariel helped to co-found Indigenous Climate Action for which she became executive director. She has appeared on Aboriginal People's Television Network, CBC, and has written for and ap appeared with media outlets nationally and internationally. Following the presentation you're about to see, we will have some time for a conversation among the artists and speakers who join us today, guided by your questions and comments. And we will close as we opened with Elder Leslie Spillett, a knowledge keeper who makes her home base at Pipestone, Minnesota, gathering of the sacred pipes and spruce wood Sundance lodges. Elder Spillett, our deep, deep thanks for joining us today and sharing your reflections. So we look forward to all of your reflections, to immersing ourselves in new possibilities for collective imagination, for building solidarity, and for an inclusive universal politics. <laughs>